Are you new to crypto? Do you need help figuring out what Bitcoin is and why you should invest in Bitcoin? Well, you've come to the right place, my friend. Today, we'll be explaining why Bitcoin matters from an angle which you can hopefully understand. Because clearly, this is one of the most difficult things about Bitcoin. Explaining it in a way people can understand. Take it away, Dogolo. Oh, yes. So make it as simple as possible. Yes. We're going to start with the concept of energy and the fact that we all store energy in whatever properties that we've acquired, right? Mm. Um, the fact that you wake up every morning requires energy. Right. You chop the tree down, you eat that meat. If you don't eat meat and you're vegetarian, you're still killing something. That's energy. That is true. You're taking away life. You know, that's actually very interesting because you know, vegetarians. <laughs> hey, proof of work. <laughs> hey, listen, man. I think I need to become a vegetarian myself because I hey. need to reduce my creatinine levels, man. You know? hey, say that again. Creatinine. What the heck is that? <laughs> creatinine. Okay. So creatinine. Okay. is something that, um, let's say if you consume a lot of creatine, protein or you mm -hmm. work out a lot or for some mm -hmm. people you know your kidneys are just bullshit oh dang i do not mean to diss anyone's kidney but <laughs> i think in my case it came from uh, a lot of creatine and uh from my athletic days you know what i'm yeah. saying so now you have to now reduce this creatine level so that overall you have full healthy function you see what i'm saying yeah. got it got it got it if you look at the creatinine that our society has accumulated Okay. Excessive, bro. It's excessive and Bitcoin is the cure. So going back to the topic, then we actually have a uh, video here, which we're going to give a bit of our reaction to and build off of, because I think that this is a very interesting concept. Hmm. And if you're interested in learning more, I absolutely recommend go checking out this video here. Uh, it's by Preston Pitch. And he has an interview here with Jason Lowry. For those who are not familiar, Jason Lowry is uh, in the Air Force. Was, I think it's Space Force. Yeah, was, was, Space was. was. It's, it's currently at MIT doing his uh, PhD or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Oh, he's trying to become a doctor. Dr. Jason Lowry. Anyway, very smart guy. Let's listen to what he has to say here and then we'll build on that. Here we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, so property rights, how they first emerged, how sapiens first started managing their internal resources, determining who has control authority over those resources, determining how to settle disputes related to property rights, and also uh, achieving consensus on the legitimate state of ownership and chain of custody of property. So at some point in the time scale of, of human beings, we started experimenting with, with different protocols for doing that. But where we came from uh, was, was effectively a proof of, of power protocol. So before sapiens and, and even before primates, most animals, when especially pack animals, when they have they just took down a kill and they had excess meat. It, it is an existential imperative for those pack animals to, to manage those resources, to determine who has the pecking order, essentially. Like, how do you divvy those up? Who, whose property does this belong to? So it's important to realize that this is an existentially important question. And the way natural selection has optimized itself is kind of what you see in surviving animals today, which is for the overwhelming majority of cases, when pack animals have property to distribute amongst the pack, they feed and they breed the most powerful members of the pack. So the powerful, the power projectors, power as in um, uh, watts, as in joules per second, like literally the strongest members of the pack get first dibs. And then if they have property disputes, like a group of wolves, like a pack of wolves, they settle those disputes through physical power competition. So they snarl and bite at each other and, and they're constantly doing this. So they're, they're constantly snarling and biting at each other and establishing the state of ownership and chain of custody of their property using this proof of power protocol, you could call it. Well, well, that was good enough. Yes. So we are trying to take this angle to see if we can use this to explain Bitcoin to the people out there that are new to the crypto space. Because I think if they maybe understand the animal reaction and the environment and how we have come to be the human beings that we are today, maybe mm -hmm. they will understand how we went from proof of power to proof of work. Right? Okay. All right. Before we became what we were today, there was this whole fight for consumption or who owns control or whatever. But right. over time, we're human beings, right? 
we started saying, okay, we cannot survive. That's the old natural selection thing that it was saying there. For survivability of the crowd, of the group, we need to find a way to resolve this. Which is why you will say, oh, you have the CEO of a company, right? The CEO is the person that you've given the authority and the power to run the company. The yeah. but, as we, but as we see in America today, the CEOs are abusing that power by doing what? Excessive salaries, excessive you know, ownership or, or profitizing, pro profiting on the company's return. Whereas a true company, there's several books out there, is the company, the original definition of company is the people coming together to build something, which really yeah. is true. People are making your business successful, but you're way at the top abusing their authority. Same thing now applies to why if you're in the crypto space, if you're buying Ethereum or altcoins, you're going towards that old mentality of, I'm giving this one guy way at the top the authority to tell yeah. and control my property, my time, my value. That is what those altcoins are doing. That is what the current fiat system is doing. Mm -hmm. But what you want, the reason why we have Bitcoin is to take us back to what actually should be, which is the natural way. Proof of work. You work, you create the value, you put the energy in to work, you create that value, you should be able to store and own that value and not give it to somebody else to just distribute, share, use it anyhow or be able to just print value out of tin here. The world does not work that way. We started with that example of you eating a lot of meat and using yeah. too much green tin. Excessive, just printing energy into your system through creatine without you putting in the work. It's not good for your body in the long term. Exactly. Now, you see, you know, part of what he's explaining here as well is this whole idea of the division of power, right? Um, and, or division of resources, right? mm -hmm. and and it seems that the people whoever is stronger, right, survival of the fittest, or has the most ability, gets to keep most of the resources, right? And I think that that quickly crossed over into this indoctrination process, which he goes on to talk about as well, where mm -hmm. most people in society just think that this is the way things are supposed to be, it's right? Normal. So they just fall under you know we talk to people all the time about buying bitcoin and they all ask like well can i buy it from my bank mm -hmm. why the heck do you want to buy bitcoin from your bank right and so it also goes to this suits thing right now the suits are those people who are at the top those who are abusing you know i heard of this term compassionate capitalism the first time actually from you and mm -hmm. it makes me wonder as well do you think this is why big boy is <laughs> <He's> so angry <laughs> in that last video which we saw Right, because that's essentially what he's talking about. Um, you know, he's angry that we're now seeing this division of power thing happening. And Sam Bankman Fried and all the other people who have way more resources uh, than, than him and everyone else in the space are essentially just forcing their way in that direction. But we need to be able to stop this, right? Bitcoin automatically allows us to be able to stop this if you can acquire your Bitcoins. It gives you that sovereignty because ultimately I understand the whole idea of animals and even primitive humans having to fight over the limited amount of resources that they yep. may have, right? Whether yep. it's a hunt or something like that. However, in modern times, there is not a need to be hunting and stuff like that. And even I will even go as far as to say in modern times, those issues do not exist because the issue that we have now is more an issue of fair wealth distribution and just equal opportunity that does not mean you know same outcomes but it just means the same opportunity so for example if you cannot open up a bank account or if you cannot spend your money wherever you want across the globe right or you cannot even trade in pre-market but the wealthy people can get in pre-market and take advantage of that situation that puts you at a disadvantage simply because a group of people are in cahoots, corrupt, greedy, mm -hmm. thereby putting you in a position where you're disadvantaged. Not everyone is equal, but we all deserve equal things. Animal farm. Yes. You know, <laughs> so it is what it is. And I think oh. that when, and when I say human beings are not equal, what I mean there is... Everybody put different level of energy into everybody put, being yeah. 
it's it's a different level of effort. Yes. Right. That everybody can deliver. Yeah. Right. If you go to the gym and you meet a swole guy, he's going to be pumping one thirties. Mm-hmm. You cannot expect to be pumping one thirties if you're scrawny and it's your first respect day at the gym. Your, right. Respect your zone. <laughs> However, you deserve to earn some gains. You deserve to get swole at the rate of curling five pounds. You deserve that. Access to the gym. You deserve exactly. access to the gym. Access to the gym. You have access to the equipment. To pump iron if you want. Exactly. That is what Bitcoin gives you. Everybody. Giving us, right? You have the right, property rights, the rights to those gains because you went to the gym, proof of work, and got the work in. And you can store your muscle in your body. <laughs> You know but to give it so, to the entire gym <laughs> exactly so and i think that that is that is that's how i i interpret this what do you think yeah I, that's another good angle I, like you can come at this from so many different angles what yeah. has happened given that same example that you've just used is that we over time you members over time have given authority to the gym owner or to the yeah. gym and we all of a sudden think that the gym owner or the gym is the god that has the right and the authority to tell us everything. But we mm. forget that we give the gym the authority to operate, to even be a gym in the first place. Absolutely. Because without us, the gym is just an empty space. Yeah. You could, so also, now buy all, your, you could also buy your own gym equipment and put it in your garage. As a matter of fact. working is not decentralized forever. You can go work exactly. at your friend's place and so on and exactly. so forth. Exactly. So yeah. the gym membership even should not be decided by the gym. It should be decided mm-hmm. by the attendees of the gym. And I'm, I'm not trying to get socialization or socialism here. This is why the, you have the team balance between the current the socialist mentality, because you could mm-hmm. go to the extreme of that, but you want to mm-hmm. come to the balance, right? So yeah, you can take a look at it from that angle. But at the end of the day, when you are in the gym or when you are exercising, that is energy being used, being converted. Mm-hmm. Where do you store it? Right now, when we walk, we store all that energy, all that effort inside fiat currency, which we are starting to learn. I didn't know this years ago that it's really a Ponzi scheme. It's a currency. It's not real money. It's not freedom. It's not wealth. It's it's not riches. It's just paper money that we ourselves have given value. But there's an external factor that controls the value over time. Literally, the value goes down. Which is yeah. one of the reasons why maybe the banks are trying to get it to go down, just like the fiat. But totally different con- uh, conversation. So we're saying that there's this new technology, this solution out there that take us back to the to the nature, to the, to the reason of, of living. Value, man. Yeah. yeah, property, own your stuff. Exactly. Well, there's a lot more about this whole content in this video. Uh, we'll put it in the link for you guys to check it out. There's a lot, a lot of information to talk about. Uh, Jason has a lot to talk about. I think he's very knowledgeable about the space. I wish him good luck with his uh, education uh, and and getting the word out. We are how yet to get the word out too as well. But just think yeah. about it. If you get into the crypto space and you're new, this is what you should be thinking about. Yeah, you can easily get misguided if you're also getting into the crypto space as a new person. Yeah. Right. And I think that it is very important that we all understand the purpose of why these things are here, why Bitcoin is here in the first place. Mm -hmm. If you're going to switch over to a new platform, what can you do differently? What are the advantages? Because Mm -hmm. going over to crypto, just to be in the same place that you are right now, where no one is is winning, it's a, I would say it's a waste of energy. We might as well just stay on the fiat standard and just keep uh, doing what we're doing because moving over to crypto to to do the same thing, yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's just garbage. So, and I think this is why Bitcoin is important. I think this is why people need to understand Bitcoin, especially for people coming in you. We made this, dude, before, before uh, you know, we got to the point where we understood Bitcoin, you know, we've been all around the, the crypto space. Mac you know? Moss, open the highs. <laughs> I know, dude, that was some crazy stuff right there. <laughs> Mac you know, Moss, it's, it's shout out to you, bro. It wasn't, you know, it's interesting because... Uh, so it yes, it was Mark Moss. Like I got it. Like yeah, when he was going on about it, I got it. But like the person that really like hit me in the heart was that chick. Yeah. Remember the chick in Miami? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, she, yeah, because she was like a, like a fence man. Like there was no getting through, mm-hmm. um, with any other coin. It was just like Bitcoin 
or nothing. And yeah. I think that was a moment for me where I was like, okay, what is going on here? I need to go do some more research. And that's all you can do. Do your mm-hmm. research. Do your research. You cannot be lazy yeah. about it. You yeah. know? Because otherwise, you know, you'll be broke forever, which is fine with me. It's more no. Bitcoin for me in the future. Natural selection. Be- hey. <laughs> Natural what? selection, man. You're about to get Talk chopped up. It up it. by the banks. <laughs> Talk about it. <laughs> we will not lose, okay? So, listen, this is, uh, I think this is an opportunity of a lifetime, opportunity of our generation, mm-hmm. an opportunity that humanity has never seen before. And if you miss this one, I think you only you know, have yourself to blame. It's not financial mm-hmm. advice. It's more advice for you to go do research on where the future of our world really is. Mm-hmm. You know? Final thoughts, sir. As always. <laughs> Yes. If you have not liked, subscribed, uh, you know, we are yes. in here. We are in, in the other centralized bank controlled yes. <laughs> social uh, media. Follow us on our centralized <laughs> platforms. <laughs> <laughs> follow us on our centralized platforms, man. Listen, it's okay if some things are centralized, you know. Uh, not everything needs to be decentralized. Some things are just more efficient this way, you know what I mean, type thing. However, it can be done in a decentralized manner. It is what it is. As a matter of fact, you know YouTube is like Bitcoin. Because before YouTube, before YouTube, okay, there has never been another platform that operated like this. YouTube was so early that they captured the whole market of, you know, video content, right, by individual creators. There was no platform like YouTube before YouTube and YouTube came in here and the people who got it, the people who understood it and started posting those videos early on and started using it for the marketing, they absolutely crushed it. And look at where we are right now. You know, there was a point where people made fun of YouTubers. They're like, oh, all you do is post videos on YouTube. But here's the thing, bro. You cannot laugh at a YouTuber when these people are buying freaking Lambos left and right Printing. and you're watching them from your house, man. <laughs> going in and out of your job barely able to you know what i'm saying like who is who is the winner now oh, you know geez. i quit my six seven figure job to be a youtuber why because youtube is paying me a lot more <laughs> exactly you know what i mean they're making brand deals left and right so in many ways you could say that if back then right a youtuber was like yo you gotta get on youtube man. you gotta do this you gotta do this you gotta understand youtube you gotta post videos how different is that from us telling people like hey you gotta understand bitcoin because this is the future it's not gonna happen overnight but when it happens you're gonna be late you see what i'm saying we'll still help anyway listen i'm going to give myself a uh until next time stock nation absolutely incredible brazen out Double O.